Velocity and OSCON. Now, this talk is actually a primer on how I taught my, myself to be more empathetic. A couple of years ago, when I was upgrading myself from a single contributor to a manager, I took a leadership course, and we had to do this sort of um, soft skills profile thing. This is my profile from a few years ago. And I know that it's a little bit difficult to read. We'll talk about it a bit later. But it's got some, some green stuff, creative thinking, analytical thinking, decision-based thinking. And within the analytical thinking, there's a chart or a bar that I want to show you. If you couldn't see it, I've zoomed in. Empathy didn't score so well on that one. In fact, I didn't score so well. I scored a zero. I had a, an aversion, shall we say, to using empathy in the workplace. And that's because empathy is, it's all about feelings. And quite frankly, I don't get paid to talk about feelings, and I don't get paid to talk about your feelings either. So I was a little bit hesitant to engage in empathy in the workplace. Sympathy, though, I was really good at. Sympathy was the ability to talk about um, how your situation sucked and then think of a way out of that situation with you. So it was really, really safe but it wasn't that empathy thing that DevOps talks about. So I'm gonna go through three levels of empathy to give you some of the skills that I had to develop. The first one is really easy. Guaranteed, everyone can do caring just enough. In caring just enough, you're going to ask people for stories. It's really easy to do, takes a little bit of your time, takes a little bit of their time. There's, there's not really any risks, but it will improve team cohesion. So the story thing is, it's kind of got a catch to it because you have to listen to the story. So you have to, you know, ask a question and then pause. And we're not very good at pausing. We're very good at jumping in and giving our own situation, but we're not very good at saying, I'm going to listen to the end. And then later on, I'm going to refer back to that story. So you can't just ask about the weather. I'm sorry to my uh, Canadian and English uh, sort of country mates on this one. You're going to have to go a little deeper than just the weather. Second level is thinking strategies. And this gets a little bit more complicated, but a lot more fun for those of us who are analytical in nature, because I want you to think about a strategy or a system that you can apply to your interactions getting a little bit more difficult. You're going to have to think of a system like a Myers-Briggs or a 4DI or a True Colors, and you're going to have to use that system. Now, we've got, we've got some risks in here because this can be perceived as being manipulative, and no one wants to be manipulative. So how do we do this on a careful manner? Well, we take a look at the situations that we engage in, and we think about how would someone engage in this particular situation, and how can I improve that situation for them? So the motivators and unpacking how someone thinks and making predictions. The system I'm most familiar with, 4DI, has those three different options. You can be a creative thinker or prefer to use creative thinking. You can prefer to use analytical thinking or you can prefer to use decision-based thinking. And they're all different. They're all things that could be practiced. So now, once you know that system, you can create outcomes like a meeting agenda that isn't just a list of topics, but it's 20 minutes creative thinking, five minutes decision thinking. Your creative thinker is going to love it, and your decision maker is going to hate it, but they're going to know they get the last word. Finally, we've got that level three, the imagination level. And this is where it gets really difficult. And I, I kind of actually do mean really difficult. Because the genuine risk at this point, if you start thinking from someone else's perspective, is that you lose yourself. You lose your own sense of self-worth and value because you're spending all of your time arguing about yourself from someone else's perspective. So how can we do this in a, a perhaps healthier way? We can think about being a cultural anthropologist. And we can think about, for example, my account manager who broke her wrist. And it wasn't until I watched her using the dictation software that I understood how furious and how utterly frustrating and demoralizing it was to try and write a simple email. Share your invisible knapsack. You've got a lot of things that you know how to do that others don't. Think about what those other situations are that people are placed in that you can help out with. Live your life through someone else's shoes. Or those three levels, have sympathy, Care just enough, ask stories, 
understand, use strategies to structure interaction, and finally, actually engage in empathy. Think about a situation from someone else's perspective. I think we all have empathy, but I think that it's a skill that we need to practice, and it's a question of whether or not you've got the courage to do it at work and to be part of the DevOps movement. Thank you.